it's me Adele and welcome to my channel Sofa Serenity where I talk to you about my sewing journey. Welcome back if you're a regular viewer and if you're new here I hope you enjoy this vlog and consider subscribing. So I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. I don't know what the jazz hands are about. <laughs> I'm rusty. Um, so for those of you that know me, you know I've had quite a long break off YouTube. Um, I've been away since July time and it's now the 4th of September um, because I've just been busy with life and the summer and holidays and oh yeah, buying a house and new job and blah de blah. Anyway, I won't bore this vlog with all of those details. I'll bore you on my Friday shows with all those details. Um, this vlog is all about a challenge that I am supporting called Precious Fabric 24, which I'm sure you've heard of. Um, I thought this would be a brilliant challenge to sign up for because I knew I was taking a bit of a break from Instagram and YouTube and I thought this would be great to have in the plan for getting my sojo back and getting motivated to get something sewn up and i was right it was a great motivator although i have left it till lastminute.com because it's the fourth and my day is the fifth to launch my vlog <laughs> anyway i digress so this is my plans and inspiration vlog for the Precious Fabric 24, which is the challenge which has been hosted by the wonderful Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery. Now I am part of the vlogging tour where there is at least one, if not two on some days, vloggers who are going to be sharing their precious fabric with you and their plans and inspiration for their make for this month. Now, the rules of this challenge are very, very simple. You have throughout the whole of September to post your make on um, Instagram. It is Instagram only. And you need to use the hashtag Precious Fabric 24 and you also need to tag in um, Tomcat Stitchery. Um, all the details, I should have some images up here if I move out the way, point to them. Um, and you can only, only one mate will be entered into the competition. I suppose you could post as many as you want, but it will only be counted as one entry. Um, and it does have to be a new make. So I hear you asking yourself, what the hell is a precious fabric? Because isn't all fabric precious? <laughs> well, it is to me and I've got a lot of it. Um, but yeah, precious fabric doesn't necessarily mean the same to everybody. Precious fabric can mean lots of different things. So it might have been something that was gifted to you by a friend or if you're a YouTuber, a subscriber or what you are. Um, it might have been gifted or um, like an heirloom passed down through one of your family members that used to sew it could be something that's really expensive or that you'd had your eye on for a really long time um or like a liberty fabric which kind of comes into the expensive kind of uh, category um but it's basically just special to you and that's what is important and the point of this challenge is to motivate you to get that really lovely piece of fabric that is in your stash that you just really are scared to cut into for one reason or another or haven't cut into for one reason or another. Maybe it's you bought the fabric because you loved it but didn't really know what you were going to make with it and then, you know, I haven't had enough of the fabric to make something with. Um, I know I have a lot of one and two metre fabrics in my stash that I kind of bought on a whim that I loved it and then haven't got enough of that fabric to make anything with so that's an example and we all have those fabrics as well that you know we're scared to cut into because I, it's like a difficult fabric maybe like a silk or um you know something that's really slippy um or something that you just haven't sewn with before so yeah it's to motivate you to get that piece of fabric that you just like to look at but haven't really had the courage to cut into so because this is a precious fabric Whitney is encouraging people to make a toile whether that's a wearable toile or just a, a muslin um you know it's entirely up to you um so that gives you that confidence that you've got the sizing right especially if it's a fitted dress before you cut into that fabric which I think is a really important thing to do now I don't normally make twirls sometimes I do sometimes I don't you know if you watch my channel it depends how fitted the dress is or um you know if it's oversized etc um now for this challenge i am going to make a twirl and it's not really around the fit it's about pattern placement so before we start let me talk to you about what fabric i am going to be using so 
let me get you the fabric that I'm going to use. Now, I don't know if you could guess what fabric. Now, it's a brocade, which you know I like. So, those of you that know me might be shouting at me now which one it is. Um, now, you know me, I like a big print. And this fabric, you might have remembered from not too long ago, actually. Was it this year? I bought it from Rainbow Fabrics. It's got animals on it. Is this ringing a bell? <laughs> Let me find you. I'll show you. Put you out of your misery. So this is a panel. I have two of these panels, and I think they're a metre and a half each. So basically got three metres. And I need to get it the right way round. It's always hold upside down. Do you remember this fabric? Hold on. I'm not showing this very well, am I? There we go. Oh, my gosh. It had these beautiful, like... I would say they're like black panthers, but they're purple, but panthers. And then this orange and green kind of um, undergrowth. But yes, stunningly, stunningly beautiful. And I purchased two of these. I've got two of these massive panels um, in my stash. Now they weren't cheap. I think they were like were they 15 pounds each so it was 30 quid for three meters which you know isn't extortionate um not cheap i suppose either um but really the reason why this is precious to me is i think um if i can find it i'll show it but becky took some i think becky took some footage of me when i just fell in love with it and i was like a kid in a candy shop and i just literally had to have it um I had to have these panels and I, you, I'll never get these again. You know, they were one-offs, it's dead stock. Um, and the initial thought was I was going to make a jacket of some description, like a cool bomber jacket or like an evening coat or something. But I've just never got round to doing it because A, I've been scared to cut into it and B, I've just thought if I make a jacket, how much actual wear am I going to get out of it? And you know, a lot of the jackets that I've looked at, the seam lines would break up the pattern. Um, so, yeah, I've kind of just kind of froze on that. And, yeah, just not really got going with it. So that's the fabric that I want to use. Now, with this fabric, obviously seam lines and finding a pattern that can display the big print. Because, I mean, the leopard's face is very, very big. I mean... There we go. So, you know, I don't want to be cutting the face in half. I want, you know, that to be prominent on the outfit that I make. So I've been on the lookout for a, a pattern that I think would showcase it to its best ability, kind of limited by um, pattern placement as well. And then obviously that means that, you know, a pattern that might take four metres or three metres, it actually takes more than that because... I'm limited with where I can put the pattern pieces. So with that in mind, I've kind of never really done anything with it. But the pattern that I think will be perfect if it works out for this is this one, which is the Vogue 1723, which is absolutely stunning. So it's got an amazing puff sleeve, which you know, love the puff. And it's got a kind of asymmetrical, kind of this A-shape, triangle i don't i'm not i don't know it's a triangle basically but that kind of triangle shape which you know if you watch me that i'm a fan of i don't like anything too tight fitting i don't like anything you know i like oversized as well and this really reminds me of the penelope dress which if you don't know what the penelope dress is i'll put a picture in of it it's by hubbarding patterns um and i just love that and you might think that a triangle dress shaped dress might be unflattering but it actually is really flattering i feel so nice in that and i'm sure i will feel nice in this i'm 90 percent confident that i will love this style of dress on me i'm 90 percent confident i'll get the fit right on it because there's not really that much to fit um you know it's oversized it is lined as well, which is going to be perfect for this dress because this is a brocade, which is going to be a bit itchy on the inside. So I do need to get some lining material or lining fabric, but I think I'm just going to go for a black or a purple um, lining fabric for this. Um, so I will have to buy some of that. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sure I must have some somewhere. Anyway, it's also got this beautiful bow, which actually you can't see here. But I'll show you the line drawings. So you can see the bow 
well they've got the, the straps here you can do it with or without but then you can tie it into a big bow at the back which would be lovely um if i could do that as well because with the brocade being stiff it will be like a big kind of esme loved bow so yeah and then i also like it the long version but this takes about a million meters of fabric and um this is like a flowier version with a more like a viscose um kind of feel to it which i think would look nice but it's not appropriate for this brocade so that is the pattern now i am going to make the size i've got the bigger size packet so the smallest size in this is the size 16 which based on my measurements 30 inch waist 40 inch hip well i'm if i made my size i'd be in a size 80 well, I'm not going to make an 18. So I think I'm going to make the 16 and then I can just take it in if I need to. Um, but yes, really, really excited to make this. Now it takes do, 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 three metres of fabric. And obviously I'm much shorter than this gorgeous model on here. So yeah, I'm not too worried about that. So I should have enough fabric hopefully now i'm going to twirl this i'm going to make a wearable twirl because i don't want to waste time um on something that i'm not going to wear and i've got this cheap brocade but still gorgeous like a camo print sparkly number which i'm going to use i've got three meters of this which i'm going to use to make the twirl and then obviously i've got a wearable twirl afterwards which will be perfect for like parties at the end of the year christmas time get ahead of the Christmas dress right so yeah really really like that so that is the plan and what I'm hoping is that the pattern pieces once I know the fits right I am then going to be able to put the pattern pieces on the actual fabric to see if I can get the pattern placement nice now the pattern pieces actually are cooked um not on the fold <laughs> um so they're sewn down the center seam so i need to if i'm going to do this right on this fabric i need to make sure i cut on the fold so i need to understand potentially why the pattern pieces are not cut on the fold it might be just purely from a fabric point of view um, and it should be okay to cut on the fold but i don't know because I've got the two pattern, two panels, I should be able to get the front and the back. The back probably will need to be cut separately um, and not cut on the fold, but the front panel definitely needs to be cut on the fold so I don't break up that pattern, that panel. But I think this should give me enough um, surface area to get the full, beautiful face of the um, panther on there. I hope that makes sense. Um, and worst case if it doesn't work it doesn't work but at least we won't have cut into that fabric and i'll still have the v1723 to make now i've seen some amazing versions of this now the person who i first saw it on was the lovely nadia and um, and she made this for the dressmakers ball not last year the year before which is when i first met her and she looks stunning she did make it in like a viscose fab like weight fabric so it wasn't as poofy is what i'm hoping mine's going to be but she looks stunning in it really really liked it um so yeah that is the plan i don't know if i need to tell you anything else about this challenge but if not watch someone else's vlog because i'm sure they'll have <laughs> covered everything now i'm um it's the 5th of september today um obviously i filmed this really last minute the day before but you know that's how i roll these days <laughs> and um tomorrow on the tour you have the um you have the lovely Alison and Tamlin so double threat Newcastle um which is Alison from so like Dotty and also um the lovely Tamlin from Sewn on the Time they are both doing a um, inspiration and plans vlog tomorrow so check that out as I will be and yeah um if you don't follow Whitney already follow her and I can't wait to see what you make let me know if you're going to join this challenge let me know what 
plans you've got let me know what fabric how why the, pre the fabric's precious for you let's start a conversation promise you i'm going to start engaging with you all again um and yeah if you don't subscribe already it'd be really great to start subscribing to me um i am usually very very consistent i have been vlogging for well over two years and it's only this past year that this this past summer that i've took a bit of a break due to circumstances but i'm back now and i am hoping to get back to weekly vlog vlogs coming to you on a friday but yeah i'll leave it there and i will see you all soon happy sewing